Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Aegis and its second ignition. Uh, this is based off of the first game, Aegis. It is a standalone slash expansion that you can play with. This is by Zephyr Workshop. It plays two to four players for Aegis 14 and up, and it's about 30 to 60 minutes to play. And in the game Aegis, just like the original, you are combining robots. This is a tactical area control game that's all about defeating your opponents. Select five unique robots, set them in certain positioning around the board, and then go about activating your robots by moving and then taking their special skills and defeating your opponent's robots. You can basically defeat them by placing unique different types of markers on them like rusting them or blazing them or you can suck away their energy. And finally you can just straight up do hard damage that will remove them from play. Flipping over the robots and ending their existence putting them into the scrap heap. If at any point in time you do not have more than five energy to utilize you're going to be out of the game and the objective is basically to do that to all of your opponents. Now there are multiple different types of game modes that you can play in this game, which is explained in the rulebook. You could use draft mode if you want. There's also a solo mode, and you could also um, use the, uh, what's it called? <laughs> the, the star point arena mode, which adds unique little twists and turns to the board here. Like I said as well, this all combines with the original Aegis, but you do not need the original Aegis in order to play this game with all of the things that are included, which we'll talk about after I explain the setup, and then of course, how to play, and my review. Now there's a multitude of ways of how you can set up Aegis, but my first recommendation is to simply look at the starting setup. Choose one of these starting setup robots and their companion, and you're gonna go ahead and gather those robots and their combined robots and put them in front of you. Each player is gonna get five base robots and four unique combined robots. So they're going to get a main player board along with a min and max marker that they're gonna be placing on their board. And then also go ahead and take all of the different uh, player cards here that they can utilize like action types and attributes and reading actions. These are important. Put them within reach of all players so that they can see them and use them throughout the game. Make sure that every player has the combined robot standees set aside next to their standee cards and their main ones placed on the board on the color of their choice based on the uh, specific, specific location that they're gonna be in. Place all the extra dice that can be set aside anywhere within reach. These colors don't matter. They're just unique and cool and colorful. Just go ahead and place them somewhere. And all of the tokens that you're gonna be utilizing. There's damage tokens. There's tokens that are going to basically uh, suck away energy from other players. And then you have all the basic types of attributes that can be, give you bonus defense and uh, bonus um, all kinds of stuff, damage, uh, and you go ahead and just put them somewhere within reach as well. Everything else can be kind of set aside. There's a whole bunch of extra content, including an extremely uh, unique and uh, large variety of expansion content and solo bosses that you can play with as well if you would like. But that's basically it. Choose your characters, put them all in front of you, place your five robots on the board, and begin. If you're playing with two players, simply flip the board over, and there's gonna be two unique two-player boards that you can play with, as opposed to this really large board here. Playing the game. Well, there's multiple ways to play the game. We'll just talk about the one base one here, which is basically pretty simple. First player is going to start. They're going to calculate all the points they have in the top upper right-hand side of all the robots they have on the field, and they're going to add that to their energy pool. So in this case here, this guy has a total of boop, 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 20, and they'll place it on the 20. The max mark will be on the 20, and how much energy they have will be on the 20 as well. After they've gathered their energy, and always make sure you check for abilities. You can check for them before and after you move this marker here and at any point during your turn because there are characters in the game, mainly leaders, that will activate abilities at certain points on your turn. Then you go through your turn structure. It's pretty simple. You will choose a robot, activate it, move up to its number of movement, and spend one energy for each movement you would like to move with that robot. So Itar has four movement. Itar wants to move four. One, two, three, four. Then you're gonna spend one, two, three, four energy on your board to move Itar. Pretty simple. And then finally, you can activate one ability of your robot that you've activated. In which case, I could do Inferno Riff. Whenever you use an ability on a robot, you're going to check to see the amount of energy needed in order to use the ability, which is in green. And that will also tell you how many dice you roll. So two green, which is two energy plus two dice. Then you'll check the next thing, which is how high the die need to be in order for them to hit, whether it be individual or all together. In this case, it's two fours or higher. Oh, I missed. <laughs> 
This is how much damage it will do. The next thing is going to be how much range it has and any special effects or abilities that this specific ability might have. The bottom of your robot will indicate any unique things about this robot. Like for instance, this guy here has uh, Pyre Solo. Whenever you fail an action, blaze an enemy that isn't already blazed. It's pretty good. So if you fail actions, you can blaze other opponent's enemies um, or other opponent's characters, I should say. And blazing hurts them whenever they move. And as you've activated and done your ability, then you can go ahead and move on to the next one. You can say, oh, I want ABB to move. One, two, three. And you don't have to move the whole movement if you don't want to. SO is going to move. One, two, three, uh, one, two, three, four. And you keep spending your energy up until the point where you have no energy left. At the beginning of the game, you're not allowed to attack any opponent's robots who haven't activated before. So basically, you're not going to just be swinging at people who haven't done anything just yet. So you want to basically position yourself for the first turn of the game. But yeah, after you've activated all the robots that you would like to activate and used any of their abilities that you'd like to, only one per robot, then you're done. One other unique thing about on your turn is that if you have two robots that are next to each other and they share a commonality of letters together, you can combine them instead of using an action for one of them. So for instance, if Itar wanted to, he could move one, two, three, and he could combine with Esso. You have to check to see if that's possible based on what you have here. So Itar is going to be a, uh, an I, and Esso is going to be an E. And you need an I and an E and an SO here. So I have an SO2000. And if I want, I can combine taking these guys off of the board and putting on a new one in its place. Now you can choose either space that the other current robots had been in and put it down. This robot may not activate or move. However, it will use any combined abilities that it has when it enters the field. And you can check to see what they do based on the robot that you're combining. The other two robots are actually going to combine together. You'll put them together and right underneath this guy here because now he's gonna have all of their attributes as well as their makes and models, which will be important for when you want to combine them with other robots like the A-E-I-S, Ika Shaw. It's a really powerful one. So. You're only going to be able to combine two robots together, and if it's uh, two one letters, it'll go to a two letter, and if it's two two letters, it'll go into a four letter, and that's kind of how it works. And, or a three and a one making a four letter, etc., etc. But that is the only other action you're going to be taking, and then you have a new robot. When you combine, all the damage and everything, all the nasty stuff on the previous robots is gone, and the new robot comes in fresh. So it's a good way to kind of combine robots before they die. And that's basically it. Move to the next player. He'll increase his energy to whatever max that amount of robots is that he has in play. And then he's going to activate each one of them individually by moving them and doing one of their actions and pass until somebody is defeated by one of the many ways in which the game will end. Now, I could have talked about all the different things that each of the robots does and all the different actions and all the different types of effects and abilities, but we'd be here forever. There is so much complexity in this game. I'll go over just how some of these robots robots work just for one of these characters and I'll explain the different types of characters and how they're kind of set up. So we have, oh I don't know, Itar, uh, Itar, this guy here, he's got an Inferno Rift and he just simply straight up hits me five spaces away and does a damage and causes blaze and light. And if you don't know what those are, there's an attribute card here which is very important. I love this card. It tells you everything you need to know about all the different attributes. And he has jamming. Basically, whenever an enemy targets it, you can pay an energy and make them re-roll one of the die in order to make them miss. Um, the next guy here, he's pretty cool. He makes you roll two die, and sometimes abilities will make you roll dice and have all of them need to hit in order for the ability to activate, and sometimes it's each individual one. So if it's a four plus, and it's, and it's gonna be blue here, then that's going to basically mean that both die have to be four for the ability to work. But if it is green, then that's for each ability, in which case it's gonna be a little easier for those robots to work out. Some robots are going to have area of effects where they start uh, somewhere and then they blast outward. So it's like kind of an explosion. And other ones are going to be doing damage in a straight line. Some of them are going to be arcing and turning around. Uh, rule of sight works like most games from the middle of your position to the middle of your opponent's position, provided that there's nothing obstructing. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but each of these guys have so many unique abilities. Uh, I think these are actually a little bit less complicated uh, than the original game. There's a lot less stuff going on, but 
I feel like these guys are well, it's, it's kind of cleaner, which I really like about this. The robots themselves too, that combine into other robots. These each unique team that's presented here, so this is kind of made for beginning setup. These teams function similarly with the combined robots that you get as well. You're not gonna have some robots on your team that suck away energy and others that do damage and like other ones that are able to like move and position and shoot out attributes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, each is kind of formulated for a different style. Yisus and Indrik specifically are kind of like off the cuff players that will do weird things like unique strategies, whereas Ganeth is just straight up pow into your opponent. And uh, so is, what's the other one's called? Ashla. That's another one that just kind of hits your opponent pretty tough. And you can choose the play style if you'd like. And then there's a draft mode too. You can literally just start drafting out robots. And when you get into the expansion set, the Dios Duel, you can start basically kind of creating your own robot teams and formulating them based on the rules of the game, which is really nice. This game has a lot of base core mechanics to the original Aegis. If you like the original Aegis and you want more Aegis with unique twists and turns, the, the characters to be a little bit cleaner and additional unique types of um, attributes that you could add to your opponents, then this is the next one to get. Another cool thing about having both of these games together is that you can add the the different obstacles from the base game and put them onto this board here. Now this board has its own and you can also use the other boards as well. It just adds a lot of combinations as to how you'd like to put it together and play. Oh, a few other little things I wanted to mention too. The quality of the game is excellent. This is just like the base game as far as quality goes and the unique robots. All the pieces of art are excellent and work very well and fit the style of the game and the theme of the game. This has a ton of table presence and it is magnificent to look at when placed down, especially with four players playing this game. I am enthralled with the artwork. I think the artwork is excellent. It's like Transformers, but like modernized with unique cool characters that work together with your robots. And then the board is colorful, but not too distracting to where you don't know what you're doing or where they're being placed or the different pieces that represent different obstacles and whatnot. It all just works and flows very well. So the quality and the artwork, everything here melds together very, very well. I love the artwork for Aegis and the quality. Don't yeah, honestly, it's 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 great. This is an easy game to understand. Once you've sat down, there's a lot of stuff looking on, like on the field that looks like there's a lot of stuff you can do. There's a ton of extra combinations, but you don't have to use them. You don't have to add any of these extra things if you don't want to. Or you can maybe only just add one or two in the game. Maybe you want to keep all your main base robots. And every question that you have is going to be answered by these cards here. And if needed, then there's a couple of other cards here that explain like combining and FAQs and whatnot. But just the majority of everything in the game is going to be right here in front of you. So you don't have to go constantly looking to the rules for what does this do? Or what does that do? How does this robot work? There's a little bit of balancing that I think they need to uh, change, especially with Ganeth. Ganeth seems a little bit more extra powerful than usual, but they do know that already. And there is a lot of balancing stuff that's gonna be going on before the campaign goes off. So I wouldn't be too worried about it. The original base game is really well balanced, even if it is a little crazy as to all the things you can do in the game. Uh, this one here, like I said, is cleaner. It works really well. And the characters function uniquely differently, but they all have their own cool play style. This is specifically is really cool. It's something very interesting that I hadn't seen before in another game. So. This game is fun. I really, really like Aegis. I think that they did a great job making, making this expansion. This is one I would personally choose to purchase having this base game here. So that way I just get even more of the game with unique choices and combinations. And once you're kind of like a pro in the game for the first game, this is just more of the same, more fun with a bunch of unique extra ways to play, adding in the solo mode to the game, adding in the star mode to the game. It just has a lot to offer. And I really, really like Aegis. If you like this game, if you like, uh, like Transformers, if you enjoy like combining robots and tactics, it kind of reminds me of that old tactics game with the robots that move on the board. Somebody will tell me in the comments, I'm sure. Uh, Advance Wars. This is basically Advance Wars and Transformers combined. And I, I love both those things. So I love Aegis. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Aegis Second Ignition. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description will be available on Kickstarter. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. Go ahead and check out the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter list, and more. Check out the link down below in the description. And of course, subscribe, hit that bell notification button to see more videos just like this one. Thank you guys so much. And as always, I look forward to uh, just feeding your robots with my robots next time.